So a uh, user say on over on there, the Polycom forms was asking how to create a train wheel, like a spoked wheel, um, similar to a wagon wheel, um, in ZBrush. So I responded that uh, you could do it very easily with ZModeler. Um, so I just thought I'd make a quick video uh, just to demonstrate um, how simply it can be done. So I'll just start here with a um, cylinder 3D primitive and um, come down to initialize and just change your H divide down to uh, the number of spokes that you want. So in this case, um, it'll be 12. So I'll just double that to 24 and bring the uh, the V divide all the way down and then just uh, make poly mesh 3D. And then I'll just use, you can either use the clip curve um, to get the thickness or you can just use the transpose line either either right so that's pretty much the hub at the center of the wheel and the trick is just to use a uh, radial symmetry so x to turn on symmetry radial and then y because y is the, the vertical axis and then um, the up axis in zbrush and then just change the radial count to the number of spokes that you want and that's just the, so they're not right beside each other, you have a space in between each one. Um, so I'm just going to add in some uh, control loops here. It gives a bit of space and then Q mesh out. And just bring the spokes out to, to whatever um, to whatever length you want. So you can um, you can hold down shift when you're Q meshing. And that's going to move it rather than um, add another extrusion on. So once you're happy then with the, um, with the length you can either just add in, um, add an edge loop in, uh, the thickness of the hub here, the outer rim, or you can just um, shift, start move, start, uh, start Q meshing, and just hold shift, bring it in, and then just Q mesh out again, um, to whatever, as I say, width or thickness you want, and then I can just Q mesh out again, and uh, snap it. And then I can just use move points, uh, infinite depth, and that will move uh, the points all the way through the axis in uh, canvas space, so to speak. And just sort of line that up so that the next um, the next Q mesh extrusion is going to snap. Um, and you can also just uh, just make sure to um, sort of try and keep the thickness um, so it's, you're kind of eyeballing it, and then it'll snap into position. And um, you can also use the uh, just mask what you want to move. Control click in the canvas to invert the mask, and then you can use uh, the transpose line and move infinite depth again. And you can see now, because of the nature of the way this is modeled, um, if you were using the control edges, um, these edges here are going to disturb obviously the circular shape, so you'd have to. Um, spread these out um, the more evenly spaced these are around the circular shape um, the better the smoothing result but in this case um, I'm just going to use creasing because I believe that it looks like Seiyun is, is keeping his project in ZBrush and has been building it in ZBrush I don't know for maybe rendering Keysha or whatever so I uh, stick with creasing even though in ZBrush now you can uh, convert creases to, uh, to actual geometry to bevels um, so I'll just go with creasing um, so I have all my crease tools here. Um, so I'll just set the uh, set the tolerance, uh, just whatever, below 90 degrees. This is all going to be 90 degree corners. Uh, crease level to 3, I usually set it to. And then just D to turn on, um, sorry, just crease all then. Crease. And then D to turn on uh, dynamic subdivision. If you get this weird error, it just means that uh, the UVs um, have changed on the cylinder uh, primitive. So you just need to... Uh, Come down to UV map, uh, delete UVs. Now you won't get that error if you're using uh, the older method of subdivision, but with um, dynamic subdivision you will get that. So I just press D to go into dynamic subdivision um, and turn off the poly frame and raise this up. And you can see now that th th the problem I was talking about. Um, press D again. So these edge loops will have to be uh, spaced out. So you can do that while uh, dynamic subdivisions on, and just grab the outer ones, uh, move, invert the selection, um, and just uh, move them out. 
you don't have to worry about the inner ones because they're they're here um, maintaining this edge loop here about the selection and just look around the model eyeball it to wherever you might be getting any weird bits inverting the mask every time and I'm not gonna play around with this too much in the video I was hoping to kind of just keep it short so um, I'm just gonna call that good and you can mess around with that obviously more to um, till your heart's content till you get the, the shape you want and um, more of a circular shape at lower um, resolutions as well you can use the clip curve and um, you can just grab or sorry clip cent clip circle and then you could just line it up there and um, clip everything to that circle there um, anything in the black circle you don't want it in this case you would use the white the white circle so with that said and done um, every now and again you're gonna have to uh, you know recrease if you add um, more geometry so with the main kind of shape in place and um, we can just Q mesh a flat island flat island and sorry that wasn't on Q mesh I meant to say inset inset flat island and inset region just to give us a bit of breathing space there um, or you could have just added in um, an edge loop so I'll probably just um, no I'll just uh, Q mesh this out now uh, Q mesh a flat island or a polygroup island sorry not a flat island, a polygroup island polygroup island and then you know we can worry about decreasing later on um, inset that or else just add an edge loop and yeah, you, you know you could do whatever you want depending on uh, on the design of your train now we can Q mesh a poly loop and yeah just um, do do whatever uh, whatever floats your boat. Um, Q mesh a poly loop. I might just add in an edge loop there first, and bring that out. Not so much. So remember, hold shift, and then we can just uh, just do the same thing again because we've decreased uh, setup here and and dynamic subdivision set to the correct levels. Just crease again, and that'll crease all those ninety degree corners. And uh, with a bit of bit of kind of horrible horribleness in the middle there, so it's just a matter of going in and uh, you know adjusting some of the creasing. So in this case, you just go to uh, edge, crease, edge, and hold alt, and uh, give it that crease, making sure to turn on radial symmetry, um, and check it out then, and that uh, resolves that problem. It's probably one on the back as well that needs to be sorted out which there is so hold alt get rid of the crease and the you know and you can um, you can generally spot sort of strange things in your topology uh, creasing is a bit different than when, you, when you're just using control edges but these kind of weird things here um, it doesn't matter so much in, in crease you're more kind of just concerned with uh, the finished result so in this case, it looks like, you know, from the way, you know, we have poles here and it's creasing across three of the edges and two of them aren't being creased. So uh, you can, you know, you can come in and, and just try and resolve that by uh, experimenting with adding increases. So you can see here that. just the way the, uh, the crease is behaving you just need to experiment with it um, but that is uh, that's pretty much it for um, building the wheel
and you know it's a quick video so I just wanted to get the idea across I'm not trying to create a masterpiece here but um yeah yeah you get the idea so hopefully this was helpful in illustrating um what I was talking about um, and just because I'm fussy you know you could even um this part here you, you might want to do something with that because of creasing coming down and uh, there's none here you wouldn't really want that there you can just check out what it looks like and just put one there and there yeah and you can you get the idea you can kind of see um, different results that you can get just from playing around with the creasing so yeah I'm gonna leave it at that not too sure what that is yeah it's just f from these uh, creases here so I'll take them away and that should resolve that so yeah just as I say play with your creasing so the first method I showed was obviously just to illustrate you know how you can use Z modeler and, and radial symmetry to build things but um, a good rule of thumb for modeling is you know you, you never want to especially subdivisional modeling you never want to build something uh, one part because you end up with uh, you know difficult to control edge loops messy topology and um, it just makes life a lot harder so the best way to think of it is to just break up your objects as they would be broken up in real life so to go to the extremes on this you could break all these pieces away break uh, the spokes away into their own um, kind of sub tool or own object uh, the hub the rim break it all away but in this case um, to avoid all that moving around edge loops and everything and trying to um, get a perfect circle which um, it's never going to be completely perfect so it's just a lot easier to um, build the rim separate so you can do the same using them um, a primitive cylinder again so just uh, back down to initialize and then just set it to the same um, 24 segments and then you can just use the inner radius here bring it out to whatever you like and um, uh, make polymesh 3d and then just go back to the wheel or in zebras 4 7 now you can uh, you can just copy um, and paste sub tools rather than append or inserting them um, I'll just alt click on this one and size it up and whoop yeah so that's you know that's <laughs> that's pretty much it I'll just uh, use the transpose line bring it down to whatever size yeah so it's it's a lot it's a lot easier to manage and then then um, you can easily change the radius and this is just a Q mesh a poly loop and just start Q meshing and hold shift you can bring it in or out then without adding any extra geometry so yeah that's that is pretty much it I'll just uh, Q mesh a poly loop Q mesh a poly loop and then we could just do the same thing set up our crease tolerance and crease levels and then just crease D for dynamic subdivision and um, set it up to five or usually I set it two levels above whatever the crease levels are um, the larger the distance between these two um, or the more levels between these two the uh, more rounded your bevel will be um, so yeah that's that's pretty much it then just as an extra little kind of side note um, you know always a good idea to especially subdivision model breaking things up into you know kind of realistic um, items or parts or components that they will be broken up like that in real life alright just thought I'd add that in cheers thanks good luck